Buzu is one of the four original members of the Showstoppers, and most likely one of the original prototypes of the minds of Felix Kranken and Jack Walten. He, alongside with his other bandmates, were shipped to the K-9 facility as a part of the Relocate project, in the hopes that a new Bondsburgers location would open. However, as of recent, he has yet to be given a proper repair, as the three BSI technicians that were hired to repair him and others did not seem to have proper equipment, parts, and sufficient time to properly fix him. It is not known whether he is possessed by anyone, but it is assumed and derised that he contains the ghost of Charles. Many of his appearances throughout the tape consist of a human at roughly the same height as the other showstoppers, with brunette hair and a brown handlebar mustache. His outfit is similar to that of a magician, including a black top hat and bow tie, red jacket, and white gloves and pants. In Bunny Farm, however, his appearance changes, with his usual outfit changing to a white short-sleeved shirt and blue suspenders and now does not have gloves on, yet his hat and bow tie remains. Company Introductory Tape Tape 1. Buzu is the first animatronic to be seen performing in the introductory tape, singing The Sun Has Got His Hat On, and is the background voices for How Much Is That Doggy in the Window and Old MacDonald Had a Farm. He is not seen anywhere else in this tape. Tape 2. Buzu, along with Shaw and Billy, have been invited by Bond to have a movie night and sleepover. However, when he is listed the second time, he is pronounced as Buzu. He and his friends had a blast when watching the movie that Bond spent all of his money on. He is last seen as the first one shown to be asleep amongst the group, sitting to the left of Billy. He is not seen in the third video, and most likely is located in the backrooms. Which brings us to the Relocate Project tapes. Tape 1. After the closure of Bond's Burgers, he was seen as a plushie, as proof of business opportunities that Bunny Smiles Incorporated were able to have besides the main restaurant location. Tape 3. Buzu is seen in a series of images that preceded the intro for the technical support video. He is also seen once again as a plushie, as part of the prizes and merchandise that were stored in the second door of the K-9 facility. He is also seen possibly in the backdoors room, as a hollow shell or inactive animatronic alongside Bon and Banny, standing on the right side of the room. Tape 4. Buzu is seen as part of the failures of the Relocate project, as due to damaged parts, faulty endoskeletons, and lack of time, he was unable to be completed. One of his replacement heads is found by Ashley Parks in either room 26 or 27 of the backdoors, amongst other replacement parts. Finally, on Billy's tape that Ashley finds on the floor, the name Charles can be heard, the first instance of implying that someone inhibited Buzu. At the end credits, a teaser for Bunny Farm, the third Wall 10 Files video can be seen with him at the far right of the barn in his outfit of overalls. But before getting into Bunny Farm, you all probably know about the non-canon Christmas special centered around Boozoo, called Boozoo's Ghosts. Usually I prefer skipping non-canon content, but as Boozoo is literally the main character in this story, I'd still like to go over it. Boozoo reappears as the main character, under the name of Ebenezer Boozoo, the counterpart of A Christmas Carol Ebenezer Scrooge. He was considered selfish, rude, and hated Christmas. He was the proud owner of a toy shop, which all children loved his various toys, allowing him to gain a lot of money, especially during the holiday season. The story begins on Christmas Eve, where he appears to investigate the noise and see that his co-worker Banny broke the mug, calling her incompetent and taking the money off of her pay to make up for the damages. The Banny character by the name obviously resembles Banny from the main series. Even despite it being the only profession where Banny can get money for her family. Buzu doesn't believe in the concepts of Christmas and commands her to get back to work. Later in the evening, he receives a visitor, a kid asking for money for the poor on Christmas. Rather than donating, he instead takes the money from the donation jar, stating that since he is in his store, he can do whatever he so pleases, and he wasn't going to give money to anyone, especially on Christmas. That night, he tries to go to bed, expecting Christmas Day to not be as eventful. However, he is awoken in the middle of the night to loud music. He goes downstairs to investigate, and finds a decorated Christmas tree, bewildering him. Regardless, he takes and opens one of the gifts, revealing a small clown toy. Then turns around to see a door leading to the first of three ghosts to visit him, though he considers it a prank. 
Buzu knocks on the door to demand that they open it up, though he hears the cries of an infant and goes inside to investigate. There, he sees a present, and inside it is the sad ghost of past experiences who heavily resembles Billy from the canon tapes. He asks his reason as to why he is here, to which the ghost replies that Buzu is a bad person, who steals, lies, and is selfish. Ironically, Buzu lies about the accusations, and furthers by lying that he isn't lying. The sad ghost then sings a song, telling Buzu to accept his mistakes. Buzu tries to reject this advice, to which the sad ghost reveals Buzu's past, he had a mediocre childhood, and on one Christmas, he was never given any presents. And as a result he has not celebrated Christmas since. Buzu, terrified, asks how he had known this, and the ghost says that even though he has made mistakes, there is still time for him to change. However, Buzu does not accept any of this, and keeps to his idea that he isn't lying. The sad ghost begins to cry, and states that two more ghosts will visit him, and if he does not change the errors of his ways, he'll see him in hell. Buzu wakes up from his encounter of the sad ghosts, relieved that he was out of his bad dream. However, when he hears laughter, he sees the second door of the ghost who will visit him. He enters, and is surrounded by toys, most likely the ones that he had made himself. He then sees a plush version of himself, to which it is picked up by the second ghost, the jolly ghost of present paths who heavily resembles Shaw from the canon tapes. He asks who she is, and she replies with her name, stating that she can show the consequences of his actions, and the representation of his greed, though nowhere near as ugly. Buzu asks what she wants to show him, and seeing the television, which is the jolly ghost's favorite. He presses the button as told, and sees the house where Bani lives, and is told that due to taking money out of her pay, she is unable to provide for her family and is even unable to give them presents for Christmas. He realizes the errors of his ways and didn't want any of this, but Jolly says that it doesn't matter, stating that his greed not only affects what little time he has left, but also affects others, as soon Banis' family will die if he doesn't do anything. Buzu then sees two presents, and is shown ignorance and want, which Jolly warns of them, and that they are dying, all by Buzu's hands. They then recite the insults that Buzu hurled earlier that day, and despite wanting them to stop, they are unfazed and get even louder, then stop, only for a few moments, only to return as they rot and die. Buzu doesn't want them to die, nor anyone else for that matter, demanding that the jolly ghost saves them. However, his actions are out of her ability to control, and soon the jolly ghost dies. Buzu meets the final ghost mortality who heavily resembles Bon from the canon tapes that will visit him by seeing a room at the end of the hallway, which is darkened by a silhouette. He enters to see a wind-up toy of a rabbit, picking it up as he gets confused, wondering how it got here. Buzu becomes mortified upon seeing the third ghost, stating that he isn't ready to die. However, mortality states that no one will ever be ready, and that in the end, as always, they turn into nothing. Buzu begins to cry, and is told by mortality that he has been in constant running, from mortality, his actions, himself, and even time. He is presented what fate belies him behind a door, and turns to ask morality if he will be okay. Only to find that he isn't there. He opens the door and enters the blinding light, finding himself in his shop. He is elated to find that everything has returned to normal, and is delighted to see Bani. However, when he calls her name, she turns to him and is just as delighted to see him and is glad he is okay, but soon rots and dies. Buzu is terrified and confused, hearing a doorbell and seeing the kid from yesterday, asking for help. However, he is instead only given an invitation to his own funeral, stating that he was born in 1892 and died in 1964. The kid, rotting, tries to reach for him. And he cowers in fear, seeing the walls and the many paintings of himself turn to blackness as it melts. He trembles and flinches upon seeing mortality lunge for him, only to cry and wants to go home. Even knowing that his life is over, he begs to be let go. A white figure then appears, to be revealed as a young Buzu. He begs for him to run away, but sees his childish version decay and die in agony when touched by mortality. Buzu then sees the sad ghost and jolly ghost, but despite his pleas, they are made in vain. He asks what mortality is going to do for him, only to be given a present. He opens it, seeing a clock that strikes midnight, indicating that his time is finally up. On the actual next day, Christmas, Buzu was found in a blooded mess, and no one has any idea how he exactly died, although he is gone, and that's where the story ends.
His face is for the most part censored by a black bar, but shortly before transitioning scenes, the black bar is removed, showing that even in the blooded mess, Buzu was smiling. The narrator hoped that the end of Buzu was an important lesson for the children watching the video that they should be kind, and always think about others. That wraps up Buzu's ghosts, now let's get back to the canon story with the last episode as of uploading this video. Bunny Farm. Buzu appears in the introductory cutscene and asks about what the special day was that Bon called all of the showstoppers in for. Upon realizing that today was the annual fruit festival, he apologizes as he forgot about the day, and is worried that the festival would be cancelled. However, he is relieved by Pete the Hippo's offer, and happily joins the group at the farm. He is seen in the help section, stating that the most important thing the player should be having is fun. Buzu is located in Lily's birthday party, and is happy to see Bon, asking if Bon was going to help set up the games for her party. He says that it will be lots of fun that Bon will join him in assisting the party. Afterwards, after Sophie realizes that the people that she's encountering in the game have probably died, the Bon sprite meets Buzu's, which changes to a red figure and a male face. It then shifts to Buzu introducing himself to the first section of the games, which is a memorize. When Sophie matches correctly, he is happy that the player does well. However, upon messing up, he says oh dear. There are two sets of Buzu cards, and each pair must be matched correctly. However, when trying to do the second pair of Buzus, a face is revealed instead of Buzu's face, and even though his animation is an incorrect, Buzu intervenes and congratulates Sophie. He then introduces the main event, which is a spot the difference, where his voice lines can be overlapped. The first pair, containing Pete the Hippo, is normal. However, Bond's winter pick is cut short due to the appearance of a shadowy figure. He then quickly changes it to a pair of images containing Billy playing with a toy car and people, though the second image contains two red frowning figures instead of two green, happy figures. Then, he switches the pictures to that of a human male and the same human male, though blooded, eyeless, and his jaw broken. The voice lines overlap to where a modern, withered version of Buzu appears, congratulating the player and telling them to go to the prizes. The scene changes to where Sophie now controls the Buzu sprite, and walks over, to where eyes backed by Nero my god to thee is shown. The eyes then reveal the rest of the face, along with the repetition of the statement missing 0-7-14, though the subtitles state missing, the 14th of July 74. Then, a hollowed blooded face of Buzu is shown, with heavy breathing, then replaced with his body hole, completed by two bloodshot blue eyes and blooded teeth and a repetition of missing. The final is a tone of the man, though his face distorted. He says that he can't remember his face. After this mini-game, Buzu is no longer there, and instead replaced by a missing poster for the same man, implied to be Charles. After Shaw rides in pain in a bloodied mess, Charles is seen amongst the many deceased shown, including Susan Woodings and Ashley Parks. He is inside of Buzu, still in the bloodied mess, in Bond's final scene, Buzu is in between Banny and Shaw, his eyes blackened out and his jaw missing. Upon inspection, a profile is shown, which shows a decayed head of Buzu, most likely his current state while he is still K-9 facility. This concludes our exploration of Buzu. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and as always. Thanks for watching.